This is HomePod 2 from 2023 and this is the Harman Kardon Aura Studio 4, also from 2023. They are both wireless speakers, obviously, and they are both unique in their own way. They have both had some time since their initial release to improve upon software and iron out the overall user experience. Since this is not a sponsored video, by end of this video you will learn which one I've decided to keep and which one I've returned and of course why. If you are interested in full deep dive on HomePod 2, you can click here, since I will not be going through the same level of detail on HomePod in this video. Before we talk about design of Aura Studio 4, let me just first give you my first impressions. The Aura from Harman Kardon has been around for ages now, and this is obviously its fourth generation, as the name suggests. Let's ignore specs for now, we will talk about them in a minute. The Aura 4 has been released back in 2023, and I have wanted to try it out ever since. Since I just did a review of the HomePod 2 a couple of weeks ago, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to pit the latest Aura against improved smart speaker from Apple. And yes, I'm well aware that Aura doesn't support any voice assistant and therefore it's not a smart speaker, but let's ignore that for now. When I first unpacked the Aura, I wasn't too impressed with the unboxing experience, but that did not dampen my excitement about the actual speaker. I've done my research beforehand and the reviews were mostly positive, even overwhelming. Many users praised the Aura for producing a clear, undistorted sound while having a unique design featuring glass dome with lighting effects inside. Naturally, I thought the speaker would be amazing. The Aura is much bigger than the HomePod 2 from 2023, so I was sure it would blow my mind after hearing the first tunes on it. However, that did not happen. After listening to a few songs that I'm very familiar with, I was unimpressed. By the way, I was doing all the testing in my office, which has undergone acoustic treatment, at least at some level. Anyways, the sound was lifeless, generic, uninspiring, and overall just very flat. Naturally, I thought there must be an app with some settings and maybe even EQ that I could use to play around a bit and possibly improve my listening experience. But no, there is no app and no EQ for Aura Studio 4. I went to Google to see how others were liking the speaker and if there were any hidden settings or features that I was surely missing because I could not find anything in the quick start guide that came with the speaker, nor I could find anything on the official Harman Kardon website. Eventually I came across this random YouTube video link below, where a guy shows that by holding down the volume up button and tapping the effects button, you can actually adjust the bass, and by holding down the volume up button and tapping the lights button, you can adjust the treble. Well, there is no way to know that, this is how you can adjust the sound. It's also a bit tricky to do, since as soon as you start holding down the volume up, the volume will obviously go up, so you need to be pretty quick. Shout out to this guy as Harman Kardon somehow forgot to mention this in their manual or simply assumed I would already know this. And this is my main problem with Aura, it's a speaker which looks fantastic, sounds okay, but not fantastic. Out of the box, that is. Because once you start playing around with settings, you can really improve how it sounds and yet the user experience is just meh. It's anything but seamless. I mean, why is adjusting the lighting effect easier than actually adjusting how the speaker sounds? I mean, it's a speaker first, not the light first, and speaker second or is it? Don't get me wrong, I mean those lights do look fantastic and really add to the atmosphere and visual experience, but this is a speaker and not a Philips Hue bulb. Okay, so let's now talk about design. Aura Studio features signature design which has been more or less refined in its past three generations. It certainly has a unique and distinguishable design, but it might not be for everyone and in some interior design it might look a bit too flashy as it is trying too hard. The Aura Studio 4 continues Harman Kardon's legacy of creating beautifully crafted audio equipment, featuring a unique transparent dome shape with an integrated ambient light that enhances its visual appeal, especially 
in low light environments. In fact, there is 324 individual crystals which light up and in total there are 5 different light modes to fit any environment and choice of audio. When comparing both speakers, it's clear that each targets a different user base. The Aura Studio 4 emphasizes its visual appeal and could serve as a statement piece in any room. However, when it comes to pure sound quality, across all genres of music that is, because Aura really does excel and sound better than HomePod in some instances. And ease of use, the HomePod 2 takes the lead, especially for those already within the Apple ecosystem. Its seamless integration, superior connectivity and immersive audio performance make it hard to overlook. Let's talk about specs and get elephant in the room out of the way first. This speaker from 2023 features Bluetooth 4.2, yes you heard me right, and for those who might say well that doesn't really matter does it? Well, it does. In fact, I had several instances where I was standing only 1.5 meter away from the speaker with my phone in my hand, which I was using to stream music over to Aura and music would just start lagging and freezing to no apparent reason. I honestly don't understand what was Harman Kardon thinking when they decided to stick with Bluetooth 4.2 for this 300 euro speaker this just left me puzzled if you know why they did that and what the benefit for end user might be let me know down below in the comment section so just to put this in a context so you better understand my frustration bluetooth 4.2 was first introduced in december 2014 that's almost 10 years ago then we had bluetooth 5 in 2016 bluetooth 5.1 in January 2019, Bluetooth 5.2 in December 2019, 5.3 came in July 2021 and finally Bluetooth 5.4 in February 2023. Every one of those new generations after 4.2 have improved range, power consumption and file compression. So why the hell there is a Bluetooth 4.2 on this rather premium expensive speaker? Anyways, Aura Studio 4 has a pretty wide sound stage, mainly thanks to 6 array speakers and 5.2 inch down firing subwoofer. While very clear, the bass it produces isn't remotely as impressive as I would expect. It is good, don't get me wrong, but nowhere near the level I would expect from the speaker of this size and price. You can actually pair two devices at the same time, but that's about that in terms of features. So as I mentioned before, there is no EQ and no app either. Now on the positive note, the Aura is partially made of recycled materials, which is of course great to see. In terms of speaker grill, for example, fabric is woven from 100% recycled polyester yarn. All aluminium is 100% recycled. Speaker housing is crafted from 85% post-consumer recycled plastic. It is also packed in FSC certified paper that has been printed with soy ink. I mean, now we're talking. I would almost forgot, but there is also an audio jack input, which is of course great, but AirPlay would be nicer. So let's now properly compare Aura to HomePod 2. So I said before that they are both wireless speakers, but actually the way you transfer music on them is very different. I have already criticized Aura's Bluetooth 4.2, and that's the only way you can transfer music to this fancy speaker, while HomePod on the other hand doesn't have a Bluetooth at all. Instead it has Wi-Fi only and it's Wi-Fi 4 for that matter. So to be fair in my criticizing we now have year 2024 where we see Wi-Fi 7 devices popping out everywhere, yet HomePod uses Wi-Fi standard from well god knows when. But unlike Aura with its ancient Bluetooth 4.2, I haven't had any connectivity issues with HomePod whatsoever. I think not having AirPlay 2 on Aura is a huge miss. I mean, all Sonos speakers now come with AirPlay 2. I'll give you an example. Imagine playing music on Aura via Spotify or Apple Music, when all of a sudden your mate sends you a video to check out. Audio from this video will play over the speaker and pause your music. I hate this so much and this does not happen with AirPlay 
is it just does its separate thing and you can play other stuff on your phone. The HomePod also integrates fortlessly with the Apple ecosystem making it a more convenient choice for users already invested in Apple products. And yes, this is also a downside of the HomePod as mentioned in my full review. It is only limited to the Apple ecosystem, but comparing the audio quality, the Harman Kardon Aura Studio 4, that's a long name, despite its stunning design, falls short in delivering the immersive sound experience I expected. The lack of an app or EQ settings out of the box mean I was stuck with the default audio profile, which was underwhelming for its price point. In contrast, the HomePod 2, although the more modest, in appearance offers a rich and detailed sound profile. Apple's computational audio, which adjusts the music in real time, ensures that every note is crystal clear, offering a more engaging listening experience. So I'll try to better describe the differences as this aspect is quite challenging to convey to you viewers. The Aura offers a wider soundstage, primarily due to its sound reproduction method. However, while the sound may be clearer, it also feels lifeless and not very exciting. It does sound better after some tuning versus out of the box, but in contrast, the HomePod sounds denser, also much more punchy and simply more enjoyable to listen to, at least for me. And I'm talking about out-of-the-box experience across all genres of music and even on very low volume. This holds true whether you are listening to stereo or spatial audio, Dolby Atmos music, podcasts or audiobooks. After testing both side by side for several weeks, I found the HomePod to be significantly more enjoyable and present compared to the Aura. Comparing both speakers, it's clear that each target different user base. The Aura Studio 4 emphasizes its visual appeal and could serve as a statement piece in the room. However, when it comes to pure sound quality and ease of use, the HomePod 2 takes the lead especially for those already within the Apple ecosystem. Integration is superior connectivity and impressive audio performance make it hard to overlook. Now, by now, I think it's pretty clear which one I'll be returning and which one I'll decide to keep. After thorough testing and consideration, I've decided to return the Harman Kardon Aura Studio 4. Although it's a beautiful design speaker, its performance is great but not fantastic. And user experience do not justify its premium price tag, especially given the outdated Bluetooth connectivity and lack of intuitive interface for sound customization. The HomePod 2, despite its limitations in terms of Wi-Fi standards, offers a much more reliable and immersive audio experience. Its seamless integration into my daily life and the overall ecosystem benefits greatly outweigh its downsides. Choosing the right speaker goes beyond the aesthetics. It's about the entire experience, from setup to daily use. The HomePod 2, with its superior sound and connectivity, has earned place in my home. For those looking for more than just a statement piece and prioritize sound quality and ease of use, the HomePod 2 is a clear choice. Thank you for watching this compressor review. Your thoughts and experiences with these speakers are invaluable, so please share them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech reviews and comparisons. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.